Today, I am directing our House Committee to open a formal impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden. The American people deserve to know that the public offices are not for sale. It is breaking news right now at noon. Moments ago, as you just saw, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has formally called for an impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden. Amid multiple looming investigations into the Biden family business dealings, McCarthy says this is the next logical step in the process and is directing the House oversight to lead this impeachment inquiry. This, as Chairman James Comer, also continues to dig deeper into Biden's foreign transactions. Let's get you right out to Capitol Hill. Congressional correspondent Kilmeny Duke are tracking these breaking details for us now for Newsline. Kilm. Uh, Bianca, good to be with you. In the lead up to this announcement, we had been hearing that there would be a closed door meeting with the entire GOP conference later this week, where you would essentially have House Speaker Kevin McCarthy laying out his argument for um, his endorsement of launching this impeachment inquiry. And there would be presentations by the House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer, as well as the House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan, convincing the rest of the conference that there is enough evidence to move forward with this inquiry. This was originally supposed to be a vote, a vote that would have required a 218 majority, but now that is completely off the table. This announcement this afternoon has changed everything. This is a this is essentially Speaker McCarthy saying we are now tasking this committee with launching this impeachment inquiry. We're going to follow the evidence where it leads, and we are compelling the president, as well as his family members, to cooperate. Take a listen to what the speaker said earlier. Through our investigations, we have found that President Biden did lie to the American people about his own knowledge of his family's foreign business dealings. These are allegations of abuse of power, obstruction, and corruption and they warrant further investigation by the House of Representatives. Yeah, and I thought the wording was very interesting there that he said these allegations by the House because some of the criticisms from moderate Republicans who were reluctant to support this and vote for this was the fact that they don't believe or they say they rather have not seen that there is direct evidence to tie President Biden to his family. But what House Speaker Kevin McCarthy did was lay out in that original statement where he believes House investigators have found potential connections. And this this is essentially this inquiry is needed to be able to compel these federal agencies to cooperate. He also spoke about how this would be led by House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer, House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan, as well as the House Ways and Means Committee Chairman Jason Smith. We've talked about this so much, Bianca. There's been so many letters sent out by those three powerful chairmen compelling these federal agencies to respond to their inquiries, whether it's been uh, information, unredacted documents from the National Archives, whether it's been testimony from Justice Department or FBI officials about um, how uh, investigations have been slow walked by the Justice Department. Those are their allegations. Um, but this is certainly a vehicle that they believe will empower their investigation. And they said they will follow the facts again, wherever it leads. Well, the evidence has been mounting. Uh, before we let you go, I know there's plenty of reaction and inquiry is different than articles of impeachment, which we know have also been filed. I believe you just spoke with Marjorie Taylor Greene moments ago. What's her reaction now to Speaker McCarthy's move just a short time ago? Again, since January, without much success. Yeah, the Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene telling me she fully supports Speaker McCarthy's move to do this, that she believes it was the right thing for him to do to announce that there would be this inquiry without having to hold this vote, because there's a couple ways to do this. Now, originally, Speaker McCarthy McCarthy said he wanted to hold this vote and not go of the way of his uh, predecessor, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, when she launched two impeachment inquiries against former U.S. President Donald Trump. Uh, but again, she supports this very much um, again, and, and believes that this will compel them to follow the evidence. She's on the Oversight Committee. Uh, she and Congressman Comer have, have sent out letters and inquiries as well, trying to compel some of these agencies 
for information. And at this point, they do believe that proceeding with this is the best way to uncover that evidence. Kimberly Ducart live on Capitol Hill with breaking news again, an impeachment inquiry bypassing the vote. That is Speaker McCarthy's move today. Good to see you, Kim. Thanks for that live update. All right, and also some new developments to tell you about today in the 2020 election case regarding former President Donald Trump. He is asking Judge Tanya Chukon to recuse herself over comments she made in cases involving January 6 defendants. Trump's legal team believes she prejudged both the facts in this case and his alleged culpability. Again, this is a major move. Chukon, in fact, responded asking Jack Smith to file his oppositions to this in the next three days, and then Trump and his team will have the opportunity to reply to those arguments by Sunday. Could be a very busy week ahead because the former president's legal team is also attempting to get charges against him dismissed in the Fulton County case in Georgia. His attorneys filing several motions that adopt arguments previously submitted by the 18 co-defendants as well. Trump's former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, is also seeking a pause on an order rejecting his bid to move his case to federal court from state. The deadline for the judge was set for 12 noon today. That's just a few minutes ago. Now ordering Georgia prosecutors to file a brief in response to Meadows' a request for an emergency stay. Let's talk about all these big stories and bring in former Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi. Good to see you, Pam. Hey, you too. First off, your reaction to the impeachment inquiry that Speaker McCarthy now bypassing a vote says will be started. Uh, he did say today in his brief statements, taking no questions, though, that Americans deserve to know public offices are not for sale. Pam, we've got financial yeah. records, pseudonym emails, the FD 1023, you know, whistleblower informant, informants now and the testimony. It does seem like a logical next step, and it seems like one that the president, even the speaker alluded to, if there's nothing to hide, would want to cooperate fully with. Yes, I'm so happy to hear you. But um, yes, absolutely. So, so Kevin McCarthy made a great point when he said, and uh, this to me, if there are one, two, three, there have been over 150 financial flags to the Department of Treasury regarding suspicious activity in the Biden family. I just, that's unbelievable to me that that's happening and nothing has happened so far. So that's why Speaker McCarthy has asked for an impeachment inquiry. That's one of the reasons. And he stated that. That's very factual. The Department of Treasury, 150 suspicious activity reports from Biden family members. Do you so, think so we will outrageous. be able to, if with the inquiry, it opens up more pathways for the investigation? I mean, we've been talking about possibly getting bank records from the president. Pam, can you walk us through what type of uh, moves now the GOP can make that they couldn't have made before this? Sure, and that, that's what that's what I've been saying all along. And this is not a full blown impeachment hearing. This is an inquiry, and what it does is it gives James Comer, Jim Jordan, it gives Congress subpoena authority. They have to comply with subpoenas, or they could be held in contempt. And it gives them basically they become the investigators. These great members of Congress, and and we've all seen the work Jim Jordan's done for years fighting this. So it gives them the authority they need. They will start hearings. They will start public hearings. But again, before that, they will start an investigative process, which gives them the right, yes, to subpoena bank records, which are highly relevant here, especially now that we know the Treasury Department has flagged these activities. You know, and there are at least what nine. Nine Biden family members, they're saying, are documented to have taken hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions, from foreign entities when Joe Biden was vice president alone. So that's going to give them so much authority having the impeachment inquiry. Yeah. And that's what also Speaker McCarthy was very, um, he, he kept saying, this is an inquiry. This is the first step. It's not oh. a full blown impeachment. Yet. I do want to get to some of the Trump news with Judge Chukam, but finally, though, before we wrap up on this subject, you know, we saw Nara step in and say, we can't give these pseudonym emails. We need Biden and Obama to do it. Are there any potential blockades that the Biden administration or the DOJ can use with this impeachment inquiry, though, to skirt some of the information that the GOP investigators want? Oh, they're going to try, and, and NARA is going to back them up, as we've seen what they did to President Trump in the reverse in the Mar-a-Lago documents case. So NARA is going to try to protect Obama and Biden. 
um, with everything they've got. But yes, this does give Congress much more power. Again, it gives them the um, the subpoena power. But yes, as, as, as a former President Obama and current President Biden, they will try to block any of these documents being released, and that's going to get litigated. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, we are watching uh, this very closely, obviously. Uh, Want to get your reaction to Trump's legal team asking Judge Chute Khan to recuse herself. Now Jack Smith has a few days to respond. They're citing uh, some in their filing some of the past comments she made on January 6th sentencing. You know, we already had concerns, a lot of people in the legal world, about her impartiality. She once worked at the same law firm as Hunter Biden. Some of her mm-hmm. comments where she made uh, were talking about how Trump remained free to this day. How much of an uphill battle does Trump face with trying to ask her to recuse herself? And if unsuccessful, what's the risk here, Pam? Well, first, um, as a career prosecutor, I've never seen anything like this in my life. Um, I I say this on every one of these cases that they've charged him in. But, yeah, she should recuse herself hands down. First of all, it's just the perception that she could not be partial, that she's that she has um, a bias against President Trump. That's all you need is the perception of it. And here we have an actual bias based on statements that she's made against the president, against the co-defendants. It's not a close legal call. But as you said, it's going to be an uphill battle because they're going to have to find it's, it's in the judge's hands whether or not she chooses to recuse herself. They may be able to file a writ of mandamus try to get her off the case at a federal level. Ultimately, if it went to trial, if he was convicted, it would 100% be reversed. I have no doubt in my mind. But the problem is they're trying to get him tried before the election and wrongfully convicted. That's the problem. Watch it closely. Uh, Pam Bondi, good to see you. Thanks for breaking down these big stories happening and breaking.